Hello there and welcome to Almost Solitaire. We are continuing our Commands and Colors Ancients games through the Corinthian War and uh, this time we will tackle the Battle of Lechium uh, 391, 391 BC uh, so it's taking place about three years after the last one, Coronia, which we did last time um, and uh, well, what are we seeing here then? Well, we see, <clears throat> of course, Spartans, and we see Athenians, as, uh, as said there. You remember last time it said Greek, but this is actually more or less only Athenians uh, taking uh, part of this battle on the on the um, anti-Spartan side, even though we are outside of Corinth. So the thing was that. In the port city of Legium, which is located close to Corinth, actually I think it belongs to the city-state of Corinth, uh, was on, uh, during this time uh, under control of the Spartans um, and also some Corinthians who were uh, Spartan-friendly uh, oligarchs. So uh, at this point in time they, they held that port city and Within the, the Spartan forces held in garrison in that city, uh, we had some Amucleans. And um, as the story goes, these guys were, during the campaign season, they were always returning home for a religious festival that they held, I think, annually. And during this time, it was time again, uh, so they were to march home from. Uh, Lechium, but to do that they had to march past the city of Corinth, which was um, enemy held. So the Spartans sent an, um, uh, uh, an, an escort force, a, a regiment of uh, hoplites, I think it was about 600 men, and some cavalry to escort the guys back to their hometown where they could hold their religious festival and when they do, did that they passed the city of Corinth and uh, when they have passed it the um, Spartan commander ordered his hoplites to turn about and march back to Lechaeum and only leaving the cavalry to escort uh, the Amicleans for the, for the last uh, bit of march they have left to do. Um, anyway, within Corinth there were quite a bit of uh, Athenians uh, present there uh, and there were two commanders there uh, I think the one was named Callias and the other guy is uh, Iphicrates and Iphicrates was the commander of the light force and Callias uh, commanded the uh, Athenian hoplites uh, within Corinth. So when the Athenians saw that the Spartans were marching home, having no support from lighter troops or cavalry, they decided they would strike. So at this point they marched out from Corinth Actually, both of them did march out from Corinth, well, from what I read. But in this scenario, we are only seeing uh, Iphicrates with his uh, uh, light, uh, lighted troops here. But Callias with his hoplites were also deploying outside of the city walls here, actually. Which is not seen here. Because the action took real place between the uh, Athenian... Um, Peltats, Peltasts and other light troops and the hoplites and the Athenians started to harass the guys here throw javelins the Spartans ordered a charge but of course they were much more heavily equipped so they never caught up with the uh, with the lighter Athenians who just evaded and when the uh, Spartans returned to the lines to form up again they just uh, did a new attack. So they did this hit and run attacks and 
really really decimated these guys I think actually at the end of the battle uh, the Spartans lost almost half of the forces which would be almost 300 men and uh, this went on for a while eventually the cavalry arrived but for some reason the Spartan commander did not order the cavalry to charge they got the order to keep the pace with the hoplites so they really couldn't hunt down those uh, uh, peltasts anyway which is a kind of dumb so what happened was that uh, the the Spartans had to take refuge from on, on some hills I think uh, it's what is depicted here and also I think these hills are pretty much uh, close by to Lechium because later on uh, remember this is a port city uh, when the guys in Lechium saw, saw what was happening they sent out boats to rescue these uh, hoplites trapped in these uh, hills here and at that point of time Kalias with his hoplites, which are not seen here, uh, also marched up and prepared an attack for against the Spartans together with the uh, Iphocrates uh, hoplites, or sorry, uh, Peltasts. So, and that really broke the, the Spartans. So they fled, ran for the boats, who were anchored a bit outside of the of the bay here or the or the coastline here. So. Uh, I think many also drowned and were hunted down by, uh, um, you know, pursuing peltasts who attacked them in their in their back. So this was a kind of a disaster for the for the Spartans eventually. So the Athenians uh, clearly won this battle thanks to Iphicrates and his uh, peltasts. And uh, well. This is what we will see in this battle. Uh, basically, only the skirmish fighting here between Iphicrates and and the, and the heavier here. From the beginning, we have the light cavalry. So this kind of depicts uh, the situation where the cavalry just arrived, and we'll see what happens from there. So terrain-wise, we have some hills here, and as I said, probably that's the hills where where the Spartans took refuge in the later part of this battle. And we also see the city of Corinth here. So this was of course impossible, but we have a city gate and that is... Uh, you, can, you can move through that city gate inside the city of Corinth actually. And now for the War Council. And here I have an, an announcement because uh, I've been chatting a bit uh, to and fro in the in this channel, and uh, got some feedback on you know my solitaire rules basically about this uh, uh, you know I have these three to two cards which I which I deal um, to each side, and uh, as we know there are some issues with that system. What I one thing I have seen is that some scenarios have kind of triggers. You know you have a a force that lays in ambush, or maybe a force that is doing a, a flank march or something, and it can only be activated by a certain card to enter the game. And we have seen uh, some battles before where they never got triggered, so kind of unbalances the game. So uh, that's not good with, with my solitaire system. Also, uh, a viewer pointed out that I think he was trying out my solitaire system and been playing with that and he saw that uh, one one of the sections could be you know empty of troops and you know if you only have two cards that's really painful uh, with my solitaire system because it's very hard to to activate <laughs> any use by only having two cards from the beginning and if you then got an empty section well you can believe it's uh, really hard if you get a card in that section that you, and you can just can't just discard it anyway so um, I see that also as a really really weakness in in this uh, solitaire system even though I have noticed I haven't seen that very much happening but I think the Battle of Lechum is a good good uh, 
starting point to change that because when you're looking at the scenario setup here you see the Spartans only have one unit on their left hand section so this it could easily uh, bring up this situation where the Spartan either is eliminated or or moves to the center or whatever then they suddenly don't have any 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 units in the left sector and if we have a card in the left sector and only have two cards well you can imagine it's a really really painful you can even have, imagine they get two uh, left section activation cards and then they're just crippled and that's not uh, that's not cool so um, and one idea was to have a three card minimum hand I like that uh, and that's another good reason to start this uh, change with Lechem because if you look at the card hand here uh, we have a two card difference and the Spartans have three cards so this would imply I, I would play with f five against three cards if I play with the three card minimum rule and I thought well okay that's cool let's let's do that but when I thought a bit uh, more about it I mean if I, if I implement this rule I mean the jump to play a full card hand is not that big then uh, so I was thinking maybe I should just at least try and play you know with full hands from now on even if uh, Aside, we'll get six cards, which of course will eventually happen. I think already in the next battle. So, uh, one side will get six, and one maybe four cards. On anyway, so I I think I'll, I'll I'll play that. I'll play with a vanilla from now on and try it out. So I'll play the full card hands. Um, the only exception to vanilla rules within for this is uh, the first strike card. I will play that more or less as I did before uh, but since I will play with the full hand I will actually you know if you remember when I got this um, first strike card I did just put it on the table and then it isn't it didn't count to the card hand right so um, this time if you get the first strike I will activate in the in the usual way that you need to roll a die to activate it you know you roll a die and if you get a hit by the situation that is uh, uh, at the moment when when the card is to be played then I play it and and uh, so I will play with that but it will take up one card for the card slot or the card hand yeah so that's basically it um, so well let's see how it goes the downside with this uh, is of course Mm, well, my basic reason for my solitaire system was that I couldn't make up a long-term plans. We you know with a like a five or six card hand, but all right, I, I'm 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 gonna try it out because as you who have followed this channel uh, for a while now, you you probably know I'm a bit slow player. You know, I I take some breaks to think and I don't edit my videos that much, so <laughs> you. You often see me silent in several seconds just thinking you know and I believe this could increase with a card hand because I have more choices with more cards and you know the cogs start uh, turning in my head and I think about more long-term plans and that might uh, have the effect of longer waits before I play a card but if it gets too long I will start editing new videos and shortening the the breaks when I'm just thinking. So let's see how it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm just, well, we're gonna try. But for this battle, I mean, this is five against three cards, so it's basically the same thing as I would if I would uh, implement the three, three card uh, minimum hand rule anyway. So let's do this. And uh, so let's continue. So this is uh, I expect this to be a pretty quick one. It's three banners. Uh, so uh, yeah, maybe it will be a just one 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 um, video of this uh, one session. And for the special rules, we have the hoplite infantry rule in effect. So we have a uh, you know the hoplite rules. We can activate units with a mounted cards. 
uh, hoplite units and uh, then we have the Spartan 5 block uh, medium hoplite units we have uh, 6 of them up here and here's the rule for the for the city Corinth uh, it's a fortified walled city the walls are impossible except at the city gate which is located there in the middle so that's that and um, here's the setup and as usually let's go through the troops I think this is also gonna be a really quick if we start with the Spartans it's loads of these uh, five block hoplite units and then we have uh, two light cavalry at the rear and one of these hoplites at the far right has a leader attached to it an unnamed one by the way and for the Athenians well this is a really light one so at the far end we have some uh, um, what is called um, uh, Oh, I, I forgot the name of the light slingers light slingers <laughs> yeah slingers and then we have these famous uh, 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 light infantry or peltats of Iphicrates Ifi and I think also he was Iphicrates who's located there by the way I think he was he, he did some reforms uh, in the Athenian army with these peltats he I don't really know what the reform was uh, about, probably about the armament of them and, and training of these guys because I think he has some connection with uh, Thrace and uh, even though he's an Athenian um, I don't remember the connection, was he married with a... anyway, he, uh, so I, I think he could have taken some influence from the Thracians up north and you know wanted to implement the same thing in the Athenian army so lots of these javelin throwers here and then we have a light bow unit over there and back there we have well we could call it the heavies of the of the Athenian army and in this battle it's two units of um, auxiliaries there and both of them are uh, accompanied by a leader nameless one and if you up here so that's it and as you see for the first time in almost solitary history we have a full hand of cards and I forgot to check who's beginning this battle actually well it's the Athenians uh, of course who will begin this so they have a chance to do a real real good skirmishing right away here so let's start up Here we go, let's check out the Athenian hand. Oh my. I think I have to abandon these racks perhaps. <laughs> I mean when I get six cards they will not fit in these these racks. Anyway, um, we have two units center, we have a double time. Uh, no ranged combat, so that's not a good card for the Athenians. They have three in the right hand side, one coordinate attack, and a leadership any section. That's one unit plus three units, which is pretty cool. Um, so where should we hit? Should we start with a leadership or maybe coordinated attack could be something? Yeah, I think I go with a coordinated attack because I could hit this uh, isolated uh, unit there with at least two guys. Uh, that would be slingers and some peltasts, and then we also can act with one unit on this sector here. So let's just put some bow fire on the unit with the leader there. I think I'm just start up with that. We are here to skirmish, right? So 
let's start here with uh, two dice and we are looking for blue symbols well nothing there let's then take the slingers and attack this isolated I think we are happy also to get some flags to get it retreating uh, no hits at all too bad let's throw some javelins on them let's see if that bites and now we got our first hit in here good really good like that first turn your activation so here we have the Spartan response inspired right leadership we have a leader there it's cool we could activate our, our cavalry with this that could be really something and also three here or three in the center I think I have could have some momentum on my right hand side now so maybe By the way, I mean, if we do a sh short chat about the battle plans, I mean, for the Spartans there's nothing, or for the Athenians there's, uh, I mean, they, they just skirmish away where they can. That's the plan. And just hit and run, <clears throat> as in history. For the Spartans, it's a really tough to, know, to, to see what to do here. I mean, okay, we are in hit range in a few places. I think I'm gonna do some hits here but I mean I don't really know how to catch these guys well we, I think we just just gonna try to press forward and, and and see if we can drive them to the edge and then you know at some point they cannot evade anymore and then if we get some retreat flags they are starting to die really soon so that's what I'm gonna do so let's play, play the uh, inspired right leadership. So we got these guys, these guys, and also the light cavalry. So I'll march up with these hoplites, do the charge here. I'm going here. These guys cannot battle though. And the light cavalry, well, let's ride up to the enemy. I mean, this means they cannot really throw the javelins if we engage them. So, I even think I could ride these guys over here, actually, because I can get... Nah, those will just, will just evade anyway. Okay, let's do it like this. So, here we go. Um, let's start with... Ah, no, think of it. I mean, these guys are adjacent to... Uh, maybe I won't go there anyway. I'll move these guys here. I mean, the bad thing is that those guys are adjacent to a leader, so they can also hit with leader symbols. Okay, anyway, so let's start, let's say, those guys could attack there. Let's do it like this. These guys will actually attack those guys. They will, of course, evade, but I get my four dice and I hit with green. No greens, so those guys evaded successfully. Now I will throw some javelins from here to that light unit there. So it's one die and no hit. And then I attack there and this time I will not evade with the Athenians. Let's see if we get any hits. Oh, we got the flag but I will ignore the flag because I'm supported. And I will now hit back with the Peltasts and they also hit with leader symbols. And we got one. So this is what I was hoping for with the Athenians, but 
Mm. Pretty tough. Okay, it's the Athenians again. Leadership in this section, two center, three center, and the double time. Loads of activation cards in the center now. Oh, actually two. This was in the right hand side. Uh, so, where should we continue? Let's do it in the center then. We have three uh, guys to activate there. I will actually activate one here, to throw some javelins there. I will activate those guys. And I will activate those guys. And let's start over here. It's two dice against that same hoplite unit there. Another hit and a flag. So those guys need to retreat. They go there. Here we throw two javelins against that uh, light cavalry. And we miss them. We will attack here and this time I will evade. But we still hit and hit with greens. And we got one of the horse, uh, horse blocks here, so those are down to one. Interesting. And that's it. I really don't know what to do with the Spartans here. They feel so crippled. So, line command, three and three. Oh, where to concentrate? Well, Let's continue on the right hand side. I mean, I can get two good attacks at least, and then these guys. Ah, I can even. This is good, because now I can ride up here. Those guys cannot evade now, so I will do everything I can to kill them now. This is good. Mm, I wasn't aware of that danger with Athenians, uh, that these guys could be. Um, locked in there. So let's start with the Athenian, or oh, sorry, the Spartan commander's attack. And as I said, those guys cannot evade. We got four dice and we hit with pretty much everything now. So uh, I count that's a blue or a green. So it's one hit and a flag. And he cannot take that flag and he needs to go two back. So he actually uh, loses three. Three blocks, they will of course hit back. And they missed because lights don't hit with the swords, remember? And then I'll try to finish him off with that cavalry. It's two dice. Too bad I'm not adjacent to a leader, so I missed them. That was bad. So question is. If I hit there, those will evade. If I hit there, I will kill them for sure with those hoplites, but it's a kind of waste. But you know, it's only three victory banners in this battle, so I want to get that before he gets away. So I will attack that lone hoplite um, Peltast unit there. And I hit him very many times and got the retreat flag also, so he's really, really gone. And I must say I'm a bit surprised that the Spartans got their first, or the game's first uh, victory banner, actually. And will I advance? I think I will, actually. I'll fill that gap. Good one from the Spartans.
So here we go. Athenians, Clash of Shields. A bit tempting actually. Really, really tempting to play this one. I can get three kind of good attacks in here. Yeah, I'm gonna play this. Really odd to only have light units and play this against hoplites, right? But these two dice are worth pretty much. So let's see that I don't miss anything here. Order all units adjacent to the enemy. Units battle with two additional dice. In close combat only, of course. Uh, they may not move, but may momentum advance. And we have one leader here. Um, and if they do no, uh, bonus close combat, that will be normal battle light. So they won't get those plus two for that. Okay, so we have those guys. We have those guys and we have the bow units there also who can battle. Let's start with the bow units and these guys will of course evade. But I get four dice. And we did hit with one die here. Pretty good, pretty good. Enough for the important one. Now, there is an issue here with uh, with who's to attack, what units to attack first, because I want to attack with the Peltas first, the light infantry here, and try to wear them down a bit, and then I could, you know, eliminate those guys with that unit, kill them off, because then I could move there and do another attack. That would be awesome. Uh, but the issue is, if I get a flag with this attack, those guys will retreat and I will not have any target anymore with these guys, and that's a waste. On the other hand, if I attack with those guys first, I'll probably hit them hard, but they will probably not die, or they pretty much... Well, they could die if I roll really good. And then... Uh, uh, I could... Probably I can retreat them, and then I can hit them again. But... Well, of course, if I get that flag, they retreat, I can move after them and hit again. Well, that's good. Let's, yeah, of course. Let's let's, let's take those uh, auxiliaries in attack. And that would be, if I count this correctly, they will get five dice, right? It's three for the auxiliaries and two for the uh, card. Clash of Shields card. And uh, this time... Mm, let's see. Yeah, of course, they cannot evade it. So it's only a straight battle here. And we need blues, and this was a terrible roll. Only one hit. So Iphicrates was really, really unlucky there, I must say. And now they will, of course, hit back with four dice. And they got in, they're adjacent to a leader, they got in two hits. We also need to check what happens with, oh sorry, there we are. What happens with Iphicrates, he could actually fall in this battle. No, he's fine. Uh, that was a bad one. Anyway, we got four dice in the second attack. We need blue and we need leader symbols. And we roll so bad now. Okay, we got the flag at least, so they don't hit back, but not a single hit, can you believe it? What a waste. So these guys need retreat, but as I said, they, at least they don't hit back. So, well, can't say I was too happy with the, the rolls there, but, well, we got one there, we got one there, that's all. Okay, let's grab the Athenians a card. And then go for the Spartans. I mean, the Spartans have a juicy target there now. Two blocks left and a leader. If they only could activate their guys here now. And they can. With that card or the line command. 
I think I'm gonna go all in now, so <clears throat> I will play this and I can order uh, three hoplite units with that card. We're gonna go in with the leader, we're gonna go in with those guys, and we're gonna join up with these guys as well. So, the leader will go there, they're gonna get that guy now, that's the target. These guys, well, let's just stay put. And these guys will advance up there. So we start here, those guys will evade. I won't go in that direction so I don't block any retreat, retreat pass here and eventually. And we got the four dice. And we hit with one. So, one Peltast block were catched by these charging hoplites here. Next one then. Well, let's take this attack. This will also evade and will go, I think I will go there. Yeah, let's go there. So it's four dice again. This time we got two hits. We are really crippling these Peltasts now. Really good hits by the Spartans. And now for the important one, when we are attacking Iphicrates and his uh, auxiliaries there. Uh, four dice, and we had the leader with us. So we got one, two, three hits. These guys are now eliminated and can you believe it? We get the second banner for the Spartans already. And you know what? If we get the leader now, the game is over. If Iphicrates falls, it's bye-bye Athenians. And he did. <laughs> Can you believe this? He, fall, he fell and here we are. He the third one. So 3 to nil. I mean, I was not expecting this. Really don't. So... Uh, crazy what happens I, I don't know uh, I mean I thought this was really really uh, an easy one for the Athenians to be honest they could just keep their distance and battle but it was so unlucky and Spartans rolled pretty good they had good cards um, yeah and I did one mistake, I think, with the Athenians when I got, remember, I got uh, around the flank of one of the Peltas with a, that cavalry unit, so they couldn't retreat, so we got an easy target there. And then the path was open to Iphicrates and his uh, auxiliaries there, we could, where we got the other two banners. So a bit lucky there, and a bit of a mistake from my side, but anyway, good cards, as I said. And I must say, really good rolls also, and some bad rolls by the Athenians. I thought they could get that guy uh, with the Clash of Shields last turn, to be honest. But this is how it goes. 3-0. Um, to nil. Good Spartan victory here. Showing the Athenians that even if they deploy hit and run tactics, they don't have a chance against the Spartan War Machine. <laughs> so, that was that. I hope you did enjoy this uh, small and quick battle. Uh, kind of a hit and run scenario, but from the Spartan side. And, um, yeah. It's a bit... I can't really evaluate how it felt with the cards. A bit... Uh, odd to play with the full hand, but I just get to get used to it, I guess. And um, I don't think there was too many delays, at least, when I chose the card to play. Maybe actually I was wrong there. Maybe this could even, you know, uh, quicken up my decisions because I have... Maybe some of the cards are so clear I want to play that now, so I can do the decision much quicker than with a smaller hand. That's... Uh, possible. We will see in the future when we return to the next battle. Uh, I think we will be 
uh, still in the Corinthian War next time. And I think we are up to another small battle. Uh, I'm not sure. I need to check that booklet and get back to you. So, thank you guys for watching and uh, congratulations to the Spartans. See you later. Bye-bye.